here and we're now joined by the coal and power minister, Mr. Piyush Goyal. Mr. Goyal, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Let me start by asking you about what the government is saying in terms of uh, uh, ending exemptions. Uh, and I would imagine that people within the power sector are curious to know what happens to the exemptions that the sector enjoys, uh, which come up for... Uh, uh, for a sunset in 2017. Uh, do you have any clarity, sir, will the sunset as far as those exemptions are concerned? Well, I'm so delighted that the Honorable Finance Minister has not taken the whole world and the industry by surprise. In the last budget, he had given a three-year window for the power generating companies. He gave stability and predictability by saying these concessions will continue until 2017. Unlike in the past where you had to be dependent on a year-on-year -year budget for an extension. But when he said it was up to 2017, it was incumbent on everybody to plan their finances accordingly. I believe this will not change until 2017. And there will be a gradual okay. phase out of the exemptions. More often than not, it will be the typical sunset clause. And then after the sunset clause, that will be phased out. And you will see a more simpler, non-discriminatory, non-discretionary and honest tax regime coming into India. All right, so the sun will set in 2017. But sir, the budget also spoke about five UMPPs and spoke about the plug-and-play model. And I know that is something that you've been pushing for. How soon can we actually see some forward movement on the plug-and-play model, which he hopes will be implemented across the coal sector as well, and more clarity on the five UMPPs, sir? Yes, uh, uh, we have broad plans which are the coal blocks which will be given to each of the UMPPs. We have uh, plans for a UMPP in Bihar. I have particularly a plan for a UMPP in Jharkhand because I feel very pain that a state which gives electricity to the whole country, which gives coal for electricity to the whole country, is deprived of such a basic amenity. And as you've heard my Honorable Prime Minister speak so often, about the development of Eastern India, we stand committed that there should be a UMPP in Odisha, a UMPP in Bihar, a UMPP in Jharkhand. We have the process in Tamil Nadu which we want to revive. The idea is that all these UMPPs will get a hand-holding from the government of India. We will make sure that environmental clearances, forest clearance, the ability to acquire land, water, all the approvals is made simple. We will be their partners and stakeholders in the success and timely execution of these UMPPs. I've already got a committee working on a document which is taking care of the interests of all stakeholders. We are talking to bankers, they are talking to mm. the people who made the older documents and everybody's views will be taken on board and a proper framework will be made which is stable, predictable, easy to implement and sustainable. If I, if I may interrupt, sir, uh, will this committee or has this committee already been able to iron out cost related issues uh, that the private sector has been con complaining about, has been apprehensive about, and also if you can give us a broad timeline uh, as far as these five UMPPs are concerned? Well, uh, the committee is already in discussions with stakeholders at all levels. I expect the committee to be able to give me a final report by the end of this financial year. While we have talked of plug and play, we'll have to talk to the state governments to get them involved in the process to ensure that the land acquisition, water availability and all those factors are properly taken care of. I'm in continuous dialogue with international investors and I compliment the Honorable Finance Minister for coming up with the idea of an investment trust Something which I have been hoping would happen in this country, it's very similar to the Marshall Plan, if I may, or the 2008 initiative in the U.S., where the government itself becomes a stakeholder. He has put in 20,000 crores. Some of the central public sector undertakings could put in some money. And that will give confidence to international investors to co-invest both as equity and debt at low return expectations. So that together we can raise a very large corpus which will kickstart investments in the power sector, in the rail, road sector, in the railway sector and you will suddenly see 
huge amount of growth attraction a kick start to the economy okay uh, uh, mr goel uh, you know the prime minister in, in parliament uh, the other day said that uh, uh, the coal auctions will probably exceed the kind of loss figure that the cag had held out we are now uh, perhaps reaching the conclusion as far as the coal auctions are concerned that a considerable number of blocks that continue to be uh, yet auctioned uh, do you feel confident as well that we are going to be able to get to that number or perhaps exceed the number held out by the cag So getting to that number is, of course, an absolute certainty. It's absolutely certain we will far exceed that number, and the figures that uh, can be estimated from the entire 204 coal blocks, many of which are going to go to the states where we are not charging such a large amount, but will be used to support the states' initiatives in the spirit of cooperative federalism that Prime Minister Modi has consistently talked about. and he really walks the talk when he says something some of the blocks will go to the states the rest will be auctioned okay. for the various sectors to bring about a greater Sorry. degree of uh, electricity generation larger amount of production of steel cement aluminum zinc and i believe that this coal auction will not only give huge revenues to the eastern states coal bearing and mineral bearing states but it will also right. encourage and kick start the investment cycle In an honest uh, uh, you know, and transparent manner, Shri. Yes, sir. But you know, perhaps the disappointment as far as the renewable energy sector is concerned, because besides reiterating the higher targets that the government has set for the renewable energy sector, I don't know if there's something in the fine print that we've missed. There wasn't any specific incentive in that sense to the renewable energy sector. Is there disappointment on that account? not at all chirin in fact i am delighted that the honorable finance minister has once again doubled the coal sets so we had a 50 rupee coal sets until july of 2014 which in its first interim budget it made 100 now we has made it 200 so effectively 200. we have quadrupled the funds that will be available for the renewable energy sector and in about 3 or 4 years I see coal production going up to about 1.5 billion tons. The nation as a whole, okay. and at that stage, we will have 30,000 crores every year for the Namami Ganga and the renewable energy, clean green energy sector. I think it's given a great thrust to this sector. I feel doubly confident of achieving the ambitious okay. target of 1,75,000 megawatt by 2022. All right Mr Goel it's always a pleasure speaking with you we wish you the very best of luck with those targets and uh, thanks very much for talking to us here on CNBC TV 18 it is our time